Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Malaya and I kind of like to travel. So, if you like that too, you should maybe consider subscribing. Okay, it is almost Halloween and if you don't know, I love Halloween and spooky stuff. So I thought, what better way to get in the Halloween spirit than to read some spooky, scary travel stories that I found on the internet. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna react to them. It's gonna be great. I've got my fall farmhouse candle going and we got some lights and stuff. Um I'm wearing my my best Halloween pumpkin y shirt that I have. Um I also just love this colour and I would wear it every day if I could, honestly. <laughs> I found a few stories on Reddit that I think are pretty good. And I just kind of want to link them and talk about them. Story number one comes from user Mina Bruna. This is story. Driving from Jerusalem to Amman, Jordan. It's really not that far and much faster and easier than flying. Just take an Israeli taxi to the King Hussein Bridge Cross and take a Jordanian taxi from there. All for much less. I was already in a bad mood because just prior to leaving Jerusalem, I bought a ticket to walk around the tops of the old city walls. I caught up with a group of Russian tourists and walked with them. I speak Russian and they were pretty fun, including one who took his shirt off, joking with me about being attracting to the ladies. Full disclosure, I'm a girl. As we passed above the Arab quarter, these cute kids right below us shouted up hello. When we answered in English, they threw rocks at us and hit one guy in the neck. They were throwing up. It didn't hurt too much, but speaking English and going shirtless was enough to get pelted, and it was upsetting. Everyone had been so nice to me up until then. So I was already in a bad mood when I caught a cab. Things started to get better when my nice Palestinian taxi driver told me lots of funny Palestinian jokes as we drove along. Then we were stopped at one checkpoint on the highway, but it looked like we would be a quick stop until I presented my passport. I hear stories about the passport thing so often. There's so many like that on Reddit, so not an uncommon issue to run into. I'm a dual US-EU citizen and I, I was using my US passport in Israel because I was told that border control would stamp a card instead of the actual passport for US citizens so that I could later travel to Arab countries that won't allow people who visit Israel to enter. So in case that was confusing, they wanted Israel to stamp a separate card so that later Arab countries wouldn't see that they had been to Israel because some Arab countries won't let you in if you have visited Israel prior. So, okay, the Israeli soldiers police, saw my U.S. passport and smiled at me. Then they opened it, saw place of birth, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and their faces fell. They went from seeing me as a friend to looking hurt that I was an enemy without me even opening my mouth. Then the search took a little bit longer. When we got to the bridge, we were too late. It closed 10 minutes before, at sundown, to reopen the next morning. The border guards told us of another bridge a few kilometers down the road, so we tried to find it. We got lost. Very lost. It was dark, there were few lights, no signs, and my driver had never been there before. We finally found a middle-aged, orthodox Jewish man walking by, so my driver asked him in Hebrew where the bridge was. He gave us directions, but the driver said that he suspected that the guy deliberately gave us the wrong directions to mess with him because he's Palestinian. I dismissed this as paranoia until we ran into two secular-looking Israelis a few minutes later who gave us the correct directions, very contrary to the ones that the Orthodox guy gave us. We found the bridge, paid my driver, and entered the border, crossing off us on foot. That was okay, but finding the bus that actually crossed the bridge was a bit hard in the dark. When the near-empty bus stopped on the Jordanian side, everyone but me had someone to pick them up. I walked the 200 meters or so to the taxi stand, easy to find as the one light in the distance where I signed a book with my information, passport number, taxi driver's name, and license, etc. This seemed like a safe system and I got into the front seat of a rickety cab with confidence. 
As we drove along the highway, we chatted a little and everything seemed fine. All of a sudden, the driver pulled onto a dark, unlit road leading up into the mountains running to the left of the highway. I immediately protested and insisted on returning to the main road. The driver told me that the mountain road was a shortcut, but I said I'd pay the metered fare for the longer main route that went through towns. He went back to the highway and then creeped me out even further, even further, asking me if I had anyone waiting for me at Amman. I lied and said yes, that my husband flew from Dubai earlier that day and was already at the hotel. Shortly after that, his wife called him on his cell phone and he had me talk to her to vouch for his whereabouts. Sketchy. <laughs> when we got to Oman and found the hotel, we couldn't find the entrance. I wanted out of that cab so badly that I said it was fine, I paid, and I got out. It was late at night without a person on the street and I had to walk around a scary block to find the front of the hotel. Well lit with a lot full of cars and a smiling doorman. I've never been so glad to see a Meridian in my life. A Meridian is a type of hotel. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's okay. So that is the first story. This is honestly so creepy to me that you could be in a foreign country where you don't know the language, you don't know the people, and you're unfamiliar with the whole culture. And if you run into issues traveling, you may have to change your plans and find a cab. And the, the fact that it was in the Middle East, in Jordan, where you have issues with um, Israel and Palestine and Saudi Arabia and all of this, that is so scary because they could see you as anything that they want to see you as and I feel like in that situation where you don't speak the language um it would be really hard to to explain yourself like I'm just a tourist um and you never know if they're gonna believe you or not so that's pretty freaky plus I I just find it super scary that if you get in a cab or you get in a taxi especially if you're alone the driver could take you literally anywhere and you would have no way of getting out or you know, making sure that they get you to the right place. Um, and if you don't know the area, then you don't even know if you're going to the right place. And um, the fact that this all happened at night and everything too, it's just kind of like a coalition of all of the scary things like wrapped up into one. Granted, taking an Uber and having issues with an Uber, taking you to the wrong place and stuff, all of that can happen in any country. So, um, yeah. The fact that this person said that they got into the cab with confidence, I'm like, I don't think I would get into a, a cab or an Uber with confidence in the US, so, I don't know. <laughs> okay, story number two. Story number two is scary for a very different reason, um, and this one comes from Curry Thighs. Okay. My family took a trip to Sudan to visit my dad's family. My brother came back with a severe rash all over his back. The rash persisted for a few weeks, and the doctors had no idea what it was. Then, we were at the park one day, and he started complaining about the rash to our mom, saying that it hurt even more. She ignored it, thinking that he must have rubbed it on something by accident, when he fell from the floor, screaming with pain. And literally, hundreds and hundreds of flies came flying out at a single hole at the base of his neck. He was eight. Apparently some sort of African fly had laid eggs, or more likely cocoons, in his back when he slept. They hatched when we were back in England. Scary stuff. This? Oh! The way that my whole body is like, just convulsing at the thought of this. If you Oh, it is so easy to get sick in a foreign country, and the idea of going to a hospital in a foreign country, especially if they speak a different language, or have a, a much different healthcare system, that is freaky enough. But also the idea of like picking up some unknown disease, and even if you're able to get back to your home country, like just having a disease that could possibly mess you up for like the rest of your life. But I don't know, it just, it freaks me out, and the idea of, like, you have bugs in your skin. Like, you had a bug crawl under your skin and lay eggs. Oh, I, mm-mm, 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 Because what this makes me think of is that 
Listen, I don't know really much about bugs, but I feel like if this can happen with flies, this can happen with spiders. And if that happened to me with spiders, I would light myself on fire and I would pass away. Oh, oh, oh. I know friends who um, traveled to like the Philippines and stuff and got parasites and came back to the States and were dealing with that parasite for months afterward. Years, even, and I, I just, like, mm-mm. Okay, story number three comes from Reddit user J Flying. He says, I always warn people not to go to Paris's Montmartre alone at night. Two years ago, I was in Paris on a solo trip and went to Montmartre one night. After getting off the metro, I was dazzled by the beautifully lit Basilique du Sacre-Cœur on top of the hill. I'm sorry, please don't judge my friends for not French pronunciation. Okay, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I speak about this much French, so... Those who have been there know what I'm talking about. Like a silent, sacred cœur, let lured me to ascend the hill to reach her. Before I knew it, though, I was already in the middle of the hill, and a North African man walked towards me and demanded, Look here, look at me. I didn't pay him any attention and tried to walk to a different direction, but that's when I realized that I was suddenly surrounded by this man's comrades who seemed to come out of nowhere and make the same demand, look here, look at me. It didn't take long for them to encircle me and block any route of escape. No one was around but me and them. The encirclement started to close in and I had to quickly shuffle away to maintain arm's length distance. During my shuffle, I bumped into something, a bench, a trash can, pretty hard, and made a very large noise. Suddenly, the encirclement stood still. One guy eventually took a step aside and told me to move on. I took my chance and bolted out of the opening. I don't know what exactly happened then. Maybe I was about to be mugged by a gang. Maybe I was just getting messed with. Either way, this event was always in my mind to remind me that as a solo traveler who enjoys night walks, I must always stick with the crowd within shouting distance in case anything like this happened again. So this was not the only story that I saw on Reddit about the Sacre Coeur. It's a, a really big tourist hotspot, and so I think that there's, um, yeah, a lot of scamming that goes along right there. Um, and there were a lot of stories that I read about scammers who, like, it's not usually just one person trying to scam tourists. It's like a bunch of people. But the thing is that tourists don't know that there's multiple people. They think that it's just one person, like, selling something or whatever. Um, and so all of the other people who are in on it are just kind of, like, stepping back, like, acting like tourists, but they're actually in on the scam. Um, but the scary part about that is that, like, if you refuse to pay and you try and, like, walk away or whatever, there are multiple people who will then go after you and they can mug you. Um, so it's almost like if you get caught in a tourist trap, a, a tourist scam, it's almost like there's no good way out. I feel like that the best thing that you can do, maybe not in every instance, but certainly in a, a situation like this, is what this person unintentionally did, which is make a loud noise, make a big fuss, um, and draw attention to yourself, because if people start looking at you and start gathering around, then they can, you know, attack the, the scammer, and that's not what they want. They don't want the attention, they just want you to give them your money. So, yeah, either pay the money or make a big fuss out of it. Um, and again, I don't, I don't think that the best thing to do is to go out in the middle of the city at night by yourself. <laughs> I, I think that's maybe not the best decision, <laughs> um, especially in an area where there are so many scammers. But um, I think the scariest part about this is just that there were so many people ganged up on this one person alone. I don't even know if I can hold my own against one person. I'm certainly the kind of person that will fight. I can't hold my weight against one person, maybe, let alone however many people were in on this. At that point, like, there's nothing that I can do. And that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And I, like, I feel like me being a, a tiny white female, I would certainly be targeted in situations like this. So, yeah, it's just very scary for me to think about. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this person was safe. 
Dolly number four that comes from Flexi2535. I had some new trying to haul me off on my first day in Berlin. He stopped to ask me a question when I was in kindergarten and proceeded to grab me by the wrist and refuse to let me go. I had told him that I was going to Alexanderplatz and he started dragging me out of the park, telling me he would show me a shortcut that he insisted would only take five minutes to get there. For those of you that have never been, it's at least a 30 minute walk. I was so panicked I didn't know what to do and couldn't even scream. All I could think was that he was going to take me somewhere where no one would be able to help me. I had a friend who I was staying with in the city texted me at just the right time and managed to beg off and say that she was waiting for me back at Brandenburger Tour Station, which was the complete opposite direction. He only let me go if I open mouth, kissed him goodbye, and let him give me his number, which he then made me call so that he was sure that I had the right one. He was pulling me towards the Holocaust Memorial, so after he let me go, I rushed to that and hid in it so that he wouldn't follow me. Funny, funnily enough, that night was the first day of the 2014 World Cup. I was still really shaken, but still wanted to watch the game. I also wanted to go somewhere where I could talk to people in English, because I was very ethnolingual with Germans at that point. So I ended up at an Irish bar, and the Irish bartender is now my husband, and we live in Berlin. <laughs> So that was a really happy ending, but um, a really scary situation. Um, I can't believe like this guy was so bold and blunt, like just grabbed the list and refused to let them go. Like that's that's really scary. Um, and the fact that he only let them go if they kissed him and stuff. Like that. I don't know. I don't even know like what the right thing to do is in that situation. Like I said, I would imagine that I would be a fighter in a situation where they felt threatened. I, don't, I definitely would not kiss the man. Like, I don't I don't know what the situation was really like, but I don't know. That's just, it's really creepy. And what, like, a, what a, a miracle that that friend texted them at exactly the right time. Like, that's, that's crazy. Something that seems very common is for a local creepy person to tell it to us, I know a shortcut, or I know a better view, or let me take you to this thing, it's way cooler, it's way prettier, or whatever. And I think that reading these stories is actually like making me smarter because, I don't know, maybe if I hadn't heard stories like this, I would have believed somebody when they said that to me. Um, and you know, sometimes I'm sure that people aren't telling the truth, but if they're creepy and if the vibes are off, like, they're definitely not telling you the truth. Don't follow them. Don't let them take you to a secondary location. They could be taking you to a dark alley or a creepy place where nobody's around and you have no shot of, of leaving. Creepy, creepy, creepy. And the last story that we have is a very short one from Defunct. Um, it goes, My mom had some trouble when she was in North Africa. I don't remember what country, I think it was Egypt. She and her husband were traveling in a tour bus and got stopped by some police officers. Everyone had to hand over their passports and papers for inspection. No problem for anyone else but my mom and her husband. They had Icelandic passports, which has an IS as short, and the police were sure that they were Israeli. Neither spoke very good English, and they and the tour guide had some trouble convincing the officers that they were, in fact, from a snowy island in the north and not illegal Israeli immigrants. I don't know, okay, I don't want to be, like, racist or anything, I mean, I don't know what these people looked like, but I feel like people from Iceland tend to look very different from people in Israel. So I don't quite know, like, how the police were so sure that they were from Israel, but, um, I don't know. Either way, this story is really freaky to me, because something that really scares me is traveling in countries where the government is very corrupt. Um, because if I'm traveling in a country and I just run into some people, some creepy people on the street, like, I could call the cops or I could, um, you know, at least have the government, like, on my side. You can get arrested for assaulting me or, you know, 
murdering me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, there would be at least, at the very least, some justice served for somebody that harmed me or killed me or something, right? But if I'm traveling in a country where I'm afraid of the government, um, that's a whole other story because if I don't even have the government on my side, the police could come and arrest me simply for being a female or simply for being white and I, they could put me in jail and that's really scary because like at that point who do I have on my side? Except for the US government if they hear about it and you know but you never know if that's gonna work out, if they're gonna be able to get you out of there. I would definitely be more afraid of a corrupt government than just like some creepy person on the street. Um, yeah, and I don't know if that's like warranted or not, but like I would feel the most comfortable if I was with a local guide who could tell me the customs so that I don't make a wrong move. Um, and who could, you know, make me help translate if I run into trouble or something like that. That one is scary to me for that reason, because I have a fear of that. <laughs> so yeah, those are all of the scary travel stories that I was able to find on the internet. I, I did just want to say that while there's so many unknowns in traveling and, and there's certainly so many scary things that can happen, um, I just want you to remember that, like, scary things can happen anywhere. And so, while you may be putting yourself at more of a risk, if you're in an unknown country, especially if you don't know the language, um, just do your research, right? And remember that, um, it's worth it. Like, getting out there and seeing the world is so worth it. Um, and you don't want to be afraid the rest of your life. So, just do your research and you're gonna be okay, you know? And worst comes to worst, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason, and if something creepy happens, I usually tend to just think that it will make a really good story someday, so, um, yeah, anyways, I hope that you guys liked this and that you had fun. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Um, I will be starting to post my bucket list adventures very soon. I'm actually going on kind of a scary fun adventure today and that video will be out next Sunday. So if you want to see that then make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Um, and other than that I hope you guys have a very fun Halloween and I will see you next time.